In this video, I wanna talk about what are the best math study habits. I'm gonna give you a list of the best math study habits um, that I have found. So these are the things uh, that you can do, and if you follow these things, in, in theory, you will be better at math. Uh, pretty much guaranteed you are gonna start doing better if you actually take these things to heart and, and start doing these things. So the first thing, number one, I would say is to take good notes. And this one is really important, especially if you are lucky enough to have a teacher that you even remotely understand. And I say this, and I'm not saying this to like, you know, put anyone down, but when I was a math student, I had a really hard time understanding what was going on in class. So if I could understand maybe 60% of what was taught, I felt like a champion. Every once in a while, I would get a teacher where I understood maybe 80% of what was taught, and I felt, I felt great. So if you can understand even 60% of what's taught in your class, you know, take those notes, worship those notes. So number one, take good notes. Number two, go over your notes when you get home. So as soon as you leave class, if possible, right, if it's a possibility, go over your notes. Sit down and, and rewrite your notes. When I was taking um, abstract algebra my first year in grad school, my teacher was brilliant. He would just scribble all over the board and write down random things, and the guy was just an insane genius, right? Amazing man. Uh, he, he passed away uh, a few years ago. And I would go home and I would sit at my table. It's the same table I still have today. And I would rewrite all of his notes and I would try to dissect everything. Now, it took me about an hour to two hours every time I would do this. And I was not able to prove everything in his notes because he would, he would give us like, you know, the CeeLo theorems were review, right? I mean, I had never even seen the CeeLo theorems and, you know, second day of class, he's like, oh, remember the CeeLo theorems? And he's just going through them and expects us to know them. So I couldn't reprove them, but at least I would familiarize myself with the statement. So go over your notes, worship your notes, rewrite them after you get home. So number two, again, is to rewrite your notes and go over your notes. Okay, number three, is to go back and actually redo all the examples in your notes and all of the proofs without looking at your notes. This takes even more effort, especially if there's some, some more complicated proofs. In particular, I remember uh, trying to reprove uh, some statement with normal subgroups and, and the index uh, after my first day of grad school, and it took me like 45 minutes to like really, you know, really be able to nail it and do the entire proof. I remember it used uh, group actions. That's all I remember. Uh, it involved group actions. Yeah, good stuff. So yeah, reprove everything and redo all examples from your notes without looking at your notes. Number four, obviously do all of the homework, right? It is super important to do the homework. Now, how much homework you have depends on, on your school, on your teacher, on your class, and whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, right? Uh, as an undergrad, you probably have tons of homework problems, but they're not really all that difficult uh, in comparison to, say, graduate level homework problems. For comparison, uh, in my graduate level analysis class, we maybe had you know 15 problems every two weeks um, that we had to do. Whereas in a Calculus One class that I teach, they'll maybe have, let's see, I don't know, maybe 100 problems uh, for each test, maybe, maybe 100. Uh, that, that number might be excessive, 50 to 100, I'd have to, I'd have to do the math, but at least 50 uh, per, per test. So do all of the homework, at least get it uh, done. Number five, ask questions in class, right? This is something that I was always really guilty of, of not doing, right? When I was a student, I was the guy who like sat in the back of the class and like didn't say anything. I would never raise my hand. I mean, I was super shy. I did not talk to anybody. Um, I just kept to myself. If I could go back in time, I would totally go back in there and I'd, I'd be in the front of the class, raising my hand, participating. It is so worth it. When you interact in a classroom environment with your teacher, you'll remember those interactions, right? Years from the time you took the class probably, right? That's how we learn and how we remember things as human beings, right? So it is extremely important. So when, when, when an idea is clarified, it will stick with you, especially if you ask in a public setting such as a classroom. So if you don't ask questions, start doing it now. And if you think that, Asking questions makes you look stupid. 
or, or, or the teacher doesn't like you, who cares, right? The only thing that matters is you're learning, right? You're trying to learn and it's your right to ask questions, right? Raise your hand and, and ask. So start asking questions. Number six, go to office hours if your professor has them, if you have questions or go see your TA. So if you're at a school where they have like recitation sections and you have a TA, uh, go see the TA or go see the professor if you need the help, right? So if you need the help, uh, go see them. This is something that I actually did do a little bit uh, when I was a student. And honestly, I remember every single time I went to see a professor. Um, I actually remember those experiences. I remember the, the conversations. Some of those visits were more productive than others. Some were a little bit, <laughs> a little bit interesting, uh, but that, that's another video. Um, so yeah, it was beneficial. Um, I probably should have asked more questions. So in hindsight, I think it's a great idea. So uh, go ask questions, go to office hours. And if you have a TA and they have office hours, definitely go see them. Again, if you have questions, if you need to see someone, then make the extra effort uh, to go to those hours. Number seven, if your teacher has a review, either posted online or if he gives you a physical one, or if he's doing an in-class review, worship the review, right? Go over everything in that review. Reviews are golden, right? I mean, I review usually for almost every test when I can uh, for my classes because I think that reviews are a great learning tool because if your teacher gives you a review, then you know that that review is gonna prepare you for the test. That means you are gonna work extra hard to learn that material. That means you're going to learn more. So not only will review prepare you for the test, but it'll help your learning. So that's why myself as a teacher, I'm a strong believer in, in reviews. I totally believe in reviewing. It helps everybody, right? Reviewing is, is the way to go. So if, if you're lucky enough to have any kind of review, even just review questions, right? Do it, that will totally affect your performance in your class. Number eight, try to read the book. Um, I know, especially in a lot of classes that use online homework, people don't even open the book. That's okay, right? But again, this is best math study habits, right? So try to read the book. Um, it's totally worth reading the book, even if you don't understand it. The process of trying to read it and struggling will, will leave an impact. I remember many books that I've read that I didn't understand. And I remember that, that thought process, I remember that struggle, and I feel like I got something from it. When you read math, you have to work extra hard to do it, right? You have to read really, really slow, line by line. So it's that extra effort that you put in that creates that like long-term learning. So when you have time, read the book, right? Again, even if it's only little pieces, Anything is better than nothing, so read the book. Number nine, find a good place to do your homework, right? I think the tutoring center is a really good place. If your school has a place where you can go get math help and you can sit there and do your homework, sit there and do your homework. Um, if you're at a place where there is no tutoring center, find a nice study area on campus, right? Uh, it's better oftentimes to do your work on campus as long as you can work uninterrupted. The reason is if you're at a tutoring center, you can ask questions to the tutors if you have questions. Also, if you're on campus, you can go see your professor if he has office hours. If he or she doesn't, you can go see another professor or you can go ask one of the TAs or you can ask your friends, right? If you have friends on campus and if you don't have friends, make friends, right? So best place to do your work is the tutoring center. That is the best place to do your work. Number 10, form study groups. Not only do study groups help you, but they help your friends and they help you create. Number 10, form, number 10, form study groups. By forming study groups or going to other study groups, not only do you learn more by discussing mathematics with people, right? Talking about math is a really good way to learn math. So it gives you an opportunity to do that. But it also creates relationships, right? You make some of the best friends uh, in your life in, in college, right? So now is the time to start creating those relationships. That Some of them will be lifelong relationships, right? So form study groups. So I think those are the 10 best things that you can do in order to increase your success 
in math. So there you have it. Good luck.